Good morning, Pat Zemer here with the MagnaWave Office Hours for this Tuesday morning in February. Glad to be here this morning and uh, as always, here we are two minutes late, ready to go, I've been set up and prepared for the last 20 minutes and at nine o'clock I go totally offline, have to reset everything and kind of start over. But I'm glad to be here this morning and uh, we look forward to uh, visiting with you and answering your questions. Just to go over a few details here, uh, if you'd like to call me, and uh, discuss a particular question or something like that, please dial, send your name to 502-599-9722. Just text your name to that number and then I will be able to call you back and we can have a discussion. That way we don't have three or four people trying to call at one time. So send me a text with your name and your question if you'd like to 502 502- 599-9722. Now, a couple of things to go over. Of course, you know that we have the Alexa flash briefings that are in place. So if you go, if you have an Alexa or an Echo, or you could actually put it on your phone, put Alexa on your phone, you can go to Alexa each day and ask, Alexa, what's my MagnaWay flash briefing for today? And uh, she will give you a tidbit of history, or I will give you a tidbit of history, or a protocol, or just some good information about MagnaWave and PEMF in general. So it's the Alexa flash briefings. This is soon going to be available on uh, Google. Um, Google Home will have the uh, briefings as well. So that's coming. So you can certainly uh, do that and find that um, on your uh, Echo uh, device. Also, uh, just wanted to uh, come back and uh, discuss a few things. Um, you can also find, if you're looking for a specific topic or a specific indication that you would like to know more about, go to the uh, Facebook group, MagnaWave International, P- P- MagnaWave PEMF International Education and Resources group page. And you can ask any question that you would like to ask. You can just go into the search bar and put in diabetes. And any discussions that have been held about diabetes over the last 10 years will come up for your review and uh, capability of learning. Also, uh, another neat thing, you can go to the AOPP, the PEMFprofessionals.com, and they have a whole research section there to be able to research studies and various information about PEMF. That's the AOPP, Association of PEMF Professionals, and it's the PEMFprofessionals.com is the, is the uh, ID for it. Okay, also, uh, something new that is coming will be uh, Alexa Skills. And that is when you'll be able to go to Alexa and ask a specific question. How do I treat this? Or is MagnaWave available for this? And you'll be able to ask a specific question. And as we load the answers, you will be able, the answer will be there. We're going to start off with about 100, I believe 100 to 125 frequently asked questions about various indications and things like that, that you can go in and say, what about treating fractures with MagnaWave? and you will get the answer uh, that you're looking for for that specific question. We think that's really neat. It's a lot of fun to put it together. We're about ready to launch it, so it'll be skills uh, on Alexa as well. So, again, if you'd like to uh, visit with me, visit with me uh, on the phone, text your name to 502-599-9722. I'll call you back. We can have a conversation. You'll get some MagnaWave gear. Anybody that calls and has a discussion with me uh, gets to call, uh, email to the office and selects a piece of MagnaWave gear that they'd like to have. And uh, we'll certainly uh, send it to you and, uh, so you can enjoy it and, and share the MagnaWave love. Okay, uh, waiting for some questions here. If you have any questions, just put them into uh, the chat box. Let me take a look here and refresh this and see if we have any questions that are coming up at this point. Um, question that looks like it's on there. Can they use their MagnaWave machine in cold temperatures? Of course, you can use your Mag machine, MagnaWave machine uh, in cold temperatures, hot temperatures. The only real issue is if we get into uh, hotter conditions. Um, um, conditions to where, let's say you've got it in your car and it's 120 degrees, it's 100 degrees outside and it's 140 degrees in your car and you take it out and you plug it in and you turn it on, it, it gets up to temperatures of 150 to 160 degrees inside of the, de- of the device. If you're already near that temperature and it, it 
kind of overheat, it gets in an overheat situation, the machine will stop until it cools down. So in those situations, it's always best to turn it on, let the machine run for a moment or two to dissipate the heat that's in it. Now with the fully enclosed Simi and the Simi 5 machine and the uh, uh, Vesta Duo, they're totally con put together, no fan there, there is a cooling element in it. But if you, if you turn it on, everything is in place and it will help dissipate and cool itself at that point. If you're in very cold conditions, I certainly recommend turn the machine on, let it run a little bit to get a little heat to it. And uh, the, the biggest issue in, in the cold is primarily the coils. If they were to freeze, if you will, and you go to start manipulating the coils, you're trying to bend and flex that rubber uh, and silicone around those coils and it could crack. So you wanna keep your stuff at room temperature uh, as best you can. Um, just to keep it uh, in better condition. So yes, you can go uh, and utilize your stuff in the cold or the heat. Let's see here. Uh, can you use MagnaWave to help alleviate pain for rheumatho rheumatoid, rheumatoid ankle arthritis? Sa uh, Sarah asked the question. Of course. Any pain that a person has, Sarah, is a result of inflammation. So you have inflammation and what MagnaWave does is it helps the body better deal with inflammation. It allows the body to better utilize the oxygen that's available to the bloodstream that's in the body. So it basically raises the amount of oxygen in the bloodstream around the area and that improved oxygenation will help relieve the inflammation. So most certainly it will help relieve the pain from those situations. The challenge is how long the person has had the condition, how severe it is, if there's a buildup of calcium and it's constricting the nerves and constricting the muscle and it's been there for a long time, we're not gonna take that away. I mean, this isn't the kind of device that will break up calcium and do all that kind of stuff. It just, it's, it doesn't do that. But it can reduce the inflammation in the area and provide relief. Now, as I was saying, if it's been there for a long time and it's severe enough that as soon as you quit, kind of like a bone spur, if you got a spur on the bottom of your foot, can we make the foot feel better? Sure, but you're gonna walk and you're gonna cause that spur to come right back and start causing pain and inflammation to the area. You need to go have the spur removed. With the case of oftentimes with arthritis, that's not in, in the game plan and not part of the situation. So what you do there is just treat more often so you can prolong the, re, the effects and, and prolong the amount of time that the person feels good. So in some cases, you may, to treat, may need to treat a person in that situation twice a week, uh, or three times a week, whatever it may be, once a week may suffice. It may take, what I typically do is treat several times and then back off and treat as often as necessary to maintain the comfort that we've received. Now, if someone is starting to develop that type of problem uh, in their ankle with rheumatoid arthritis, uh, the quicker you get on it, and keeping it from developing. We can slow down and retard the development of the oxygen in the area, so, or not the oxygen, but the buildup of calcium and the problems with it. So to be at it early is, is the key. That's in athletic situations we deal with all the time. If someone is, is injured in an athletic situation, or a person, if you're working in the yard and you twist your back or you do something and it's a problem, the quicker you can get to it, the more rapidly you'll get the response you're looking for and get the person back to feeling better. If you wait, you allow the inflammation to build up, you allow things to be uh, further aggravated, and bingo, you got more of a problem to deal with, potentially more treatments uh, to get rid of the situation. So let's see here, um, any more? Um, oh, John Stevens looking to fly over. Good, we look forward to, uh, to seeing you, John. Um, Hi, Pat. Are the digital machines getting CE still going through the motions or is it done now? Uh, okay, John, everything is completed for, Ameri for medical CE uh, in Europe and Health Canada. All we're waiting for at this point is they had several questions at the end. They did a factory inspection. They came to the factory where the digital machines are manufactured, went through the whole process, 
had two or three things they wanted them to uh, change or two, two or three record keeping things. All of that was co completed. All of that was submitted. We're just waiting for the final letter to come back and say, yes, all is good. The ins factory inspection was good. The safety inspections have all been completed and uh, are up to speed. So it's just a matter of waiting for the bureaucracy to send the letter. The labels are there. The stickers are there. Everything's in place to begin this and it's just, you know, we just, I knock on wood, I call, in fact, I'll probably call again this morning to see, uh, or later on today to see what uh, the status of that was or is. And uh, as of last Thursday, uh, it looked like things were about to be wrapped up and the letter on was on its way, but I don't know, you know how that goes. So that that's exactly where it is, John. It's there, everything is completed, all the requirements are met, it's just a matter of that final last little letter that we can all hold up so we can begin affixing the CE uh, in information and, and uh, designations on the individual devices. And again, it is a medical CE for, as far as the European uh, market is concerned. CE is, is uh, much for those of you in America, CE is, is like an FDA type of approval, but there's an electronic CE so something is manufactured to safe electronic standards according to Europe and, and their requirements. Europe meaning Europe, Canada, South America, most places that deal with the CE type of designation. And then there is a medical CE, meaning that the device is approved for a medical purpose and medical use in, in those countries. And our CE is a medical CE, not a, just an electronic CE, which is very easy and much easier to get and acquire, but that doesn't help you if you wanna go deal with uh, the medical aspects in Europe as far as CE. In the United States, that's beneficial to us because as you all noted, we've been working on the FDA final uh, studies that we're doing to the FDA to go submit to, to the FDA. And what our studies are is we're trying to show validation of the PEMF therapy in various power levels, in all three of our power levels, high power level, medium power level, and a lower power level that we produce with our devices. You, you see, there's a lot of studies out there and people will say, oh, we got, we, this study was done 20 years ago with this low power device and it's showing this and it's showing that. So you don't need that stuff and the high power devices aren't any good, so just do ours. Well, people are gonna say what they need to say to sell their equipment but our engineers and, and factory representatives decided, let's just do some studies with three or four different power setting machines and compare the results and see what happens and be able to approach it from that perspective. So that's where we're going. And uh, that's where we are on the US side of the studies as well. So great question and uh, appreciate that very much. Let's see if there's anything else. I'm gonna click this so I go over. I hope I don't get the sound. Yeah, I need to turn that down. There. So now I can see the questions uh, a little easier, I think. Um, uh, several folks are with us. Okay. If you have a question, put it up in the uh, chat box. I'd be happy to answer it. If you'd like to visit with me, it's 502-599-9722. Uh, Text me your number. I'll give you a call back. Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, let's see here. Um, CE, that question was done. Um, what does medical CE mean and can say, okay, I got that, just went over that. Uh, let's see here. Okay, that's the end of the questions there. So if you have any additional questions, just pop them in the uh, chat box and I'd be happy to take a look at them. I do have a couple of questions that were asked uh, over the last week or so in various locations that I can uh, talk about it. And the question is, can we treat someone with hemochromatosis, too much iron in the blood? Well, most certainly um, the, the aspect of treating someone and improving their oxygenation, improving the blood flow can help the body better utilize the functions that it needs to do and to better control itself. So it's it not gonna hurt certainly to treat someone with that condition. You, you're setting up every condition for the body to be able to, to work with itself and to better heal itself and to get further down the road to uh, health and wellness in that type of situation. Let's see, I think another question came up over here. Um, I've seen a few posts about magnawaving water. What would this, uh, why would you do this? 
Uh, and then there's another one I'll get after that. Uh, Magna waving water, uh, using PEMF on water, I, I, there are some uh, uh, papers that have been written and some white papers. Basically, it can help purify the water. It can help balance the water just by virtue uh, of what it does. In many places, they'll use a Magna wave PEMF process, or not a Magna wave, but a PEMF process to help in the purification purification of water. Now, I'm not going to say that you go out there and pull a bunch of water out of a dirty lake and, and go to bang wave, but you can take the water and, and it will help the water. I'm not saying at this point uh, because our device is not a water purifier. Now, with that said, can it benefit? If you've got good, clean drinking water and you want to help the alkalinity and you want to en help energize that water, if you will, can you, can you magna wave that water? Most certainly. Uh, is it something that we're saying is, oh my gosh, you do that and you've got magic water? No, but there are studies that have been shown and papers that have shown the effects of PEMF magnetic fields on the quality of water. I do know and have experienced that you can take a bottle of wine, for example, or a bottle of a box of wine, more success in the in the white wine area, but also in, in you can treat it and put the magnetic fields around this wine and then taste it. And there, in many respects, an improved taste. So you you're just helping the whole situation, the alkalinity, and all of that uh, with the the wine in that type of situation. You got to remember that these machines are also very effective seed germinators. In fact, they were first brought into the United States as seed germinators and uh, to help seeds uh, grow uh, more productively um, and, and more rapidly, that type of thing. In fact, uh, my granddaughter did a science experiment at her school uh, to demonstrate this to where she had a plant that she treated and a plant that she didn't treat. And the results of the plant that she treated were, were better than the results of the plant that wasn't treated in terms of number of sprouts coming up, the uh, vitality of the sprouts that were growing uh, for her experiment. So in that perspective, we're helping the soil, we're helping the water in the soil become a nutrient to the plant, we're helping the plant better absorb and better utilize what's available to it. So from the seed germination standpoint, it's very effective and they're used for seed germination around the world uh, to help seed germination and so forth. So it only stands to reason that it would be beneficial uh, for water as such. So that's the whole thing on water. We are not saying and do not say that you can take water and turn it into a, 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 a wonderful earth-changing supplement. No, we don't make claims like that and we're, we're not saying that. To just being very truthful and, and understanding as to uh, what the situation would be. So that's it. If you'd like to discuss that a little farther, give me a call. Uh, there are some papers. I need to dig them out and we'll get them up on the website because that is kind of become a little hot topic when someone brought it up. The wine deal always... Uh, uh, in fact, we have been talking with some various people about how uh, using PEMF in the fermentation and the, and the winemaking process could be beneficial to producing better wine. And so that's fun and been great conversation, and uh, we look forward to uh, pursuing those conversations some more. Uh, okay, here's a question. What is the youngest age you'd advise using MagnaWave on? Uh, I'm a new and just curious. Okay, you, you, you don't want to... You, number one, it would be very rare to need to use MagnaWave on an infant. Uh, for any for any reason. Now that's not to say that if a doctor says, "Gee, I need this or I need that," and yes, this type of diet device can maybe enhance that. So a doctor says, "Let let's do this." Um, so you know you just have different different ramifications there. Now in other countries, in Europe, for example, PEMF is widely used as a standard form of medicine, and they will do things and talk about things. Uh, that we do not do here in the United States yet because of the FDA and the regulations we need to follow and, and claims that we don't make and can't make and don't want to make if we don't have substantiation to those types of claims and, and situations. But with that said, we're always dealing with those types of situations that we want it to be properly uh, properly used. And, and so 
what, what I would say, I have seen situations where you have a child that has a broken bone. You have a child that suffers a stress fracture or, or a, a, a strain of some sort and you want to help that be better. Okay. Now, there have been conversations. Children and infants have the growth platelets going on and you don't want to interfere with that. And that's the biggest question that I've ever seen anyone discuss is, well, we don't want to interfere with the growth processes and the growth platelets in the body. It's my estimation, just to think about it for, for a second, that a, a few treatments to help heal a bone or to heal a problem, or not heal, but to help heal a problem uh, with this type of therapy that's, as again, used around the world in many of these instances, is would not be a, would not necessarily be a problem. Would you want to take this piece of equipment, put it on an infant at six months old and do it every day for 30 minutes or 45 minutes? There is no substantiation to the benefit of that. There is no substantiation and no studies to say what would the good and bad effects of that be on the growth platelets and the development of the child. So I don't think that we would recommend that anybody do anything like that until someone does some studies in the US or references studies from other countries and sees what the aspect may be. So with that said, I do know there are communities uh, that in the United States that, that don't use a lot of normal medicine and a lot of normal procedures. And, and they have adopted to these more natural types of methods of application of energy to the body and they'll use it as, as has, how they're doing their, their care of their families at all ages. And, and many different agents. And that's just, the, I'm, I'm referring specifically to the Amish communities and, and other groups that, that look at medicine and look at how they get their medicine and get their help, uh, their health help in, in different manners. And so I uh, hope that helps Andrew answer uh, that question. Uh, certainly not as an everyday type of thing on a, on a young, young, young person or body. Uh, but as, as needed and as directed, always consult with your physician when you're dealing with these types of things and you'll get better direction on which way to go. Okay, great question. Thank you for asking. Um, uh, let's see here. A friend who started having seizures. They do not know what caused them. Did the, um, did, he, did the spinal tap? No issues there. How may I treat knowing that it's actually... Uh, without knowing what is actually wrong uh, for doctor approval first. Well, seizures are a thing that back in the beginning when we were first starting, uh, people didn't know, doctors hadn't done anything. Dr. Pollock hadn't done issued some of his papers and reports reporting that he does. Uh, with regard to from a from a medical perspective, but it's been found in recent years. Certainly, you want to have a doctor's uh, understanding of what you're doing, so you you know you don't trigger anything in the patient. But again, we're not really doing anything to the body to to uh, cause a seizure or anything like that. We're simply putting some energy into the body to better help the oxygenation, the blood flow, so the body can be in a position to better heal itself. Better balanced body. Uh, it, so from, from that perspective, we don't know what we're doing in a lot of different situations when we're simply trying to energize or give some additional energy to the body that it needs so much. You know, we talk about grounding all the time. Today with rubber soled shoes and everything, everything going on. We're not getting the electromagnetic, electromagnetic fields from the earth that we need. And so we're helping supplement that with these devices at the same time that someone may ground themselves by uh, walking the beach or by sitting in their yard and having their feet in contact with the ground. And so grounding is a, is a big deal. And we're doing some, some of our practitioners are working with, you can buy some uh, bracelets or pads to put on your bed to plug them into the wall to help ground you uh, as you rest or overnight. And uh, there's a practitioner that's been doing this where if someone comes in, he will ground them for 15 or 20 minutes prior to his treatment to try to get things balanced. So he's just simply rebalancing the body to better go and heal itself. So certainly uh, with regard to the seizures, uh, it's been found that, that PMF can be beneficial to helping alleviate these situations and to provide some health and wellness to the person. But you always want to certainly check with the, uh, with the doctor first. Okay, we have a couple of calls here. I'm sorry I missed uh, that, that that came in. Let me take a look here and see if we get somebody 
uh, with us to uh, have a conversation. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Well, let me do it this way. Come over here, put this here. I'm sorry, apologize for trying to call the person back. Keypad, paste, go. I believe it's Krista. Good morning, how are you? I'm well, and you? I'm great. So, I, I actually text my name first and then I text my number. So those two in a row, I think are just me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I obviously can't follow directions. <laughs> nope. um, so my question is, I, a lot of us are having to include a bunch of other modalities in order to keep our business thriving. Yes. So I am doing uh, equine massage, neuromyofascial release, and also some craniosacral therapy. Yes. And so I'm trying to decide, and I've been trying different ways, but when is the best time to do my PEMF therapy? In the beginning, in the end, work it in between the things. I'm just trying to find out what the best is. And I, I tend to think at the end is probably best because then the magna wave can help move out all of the things that we've loosened up with our massage and the neuromyofascial release. But I was just thinking, what a great opportunity to get to ask you what you thought. Well, and you know, it's, that's a great question. And, I, and I've seen it presented every way possible and i've had these conversations and really it, it comes down to what works for you uh and and again each person each animal is different so uh -huh. one one animal it, it may be more if you're doing massage and it's tense and it's not letting you do the massage may be more receptive treatment at the beginning uh yeah. maybe a treatment at the end as well uh so you, no matter what you're doing, you're improving the body's energy, you're improving the body's ability to, to deal with whatever you're going to do after you do this treatment, or if you do it before you do the treatment. I will say in the very beginning, I had a chiropractor, a chiropractor in, uh, in Florida, a uh, human chiropractor, and she also did some horse work, but she and her husband worked together, and they would treat the person or the animal for about five or 10 minutes prior to her adjustment. Then once the adjustment was completed, they would treat again to help relieve any inflammation that was there and to move things down the road. So that was their situation. They sandwiched the chiropractic between. Okay. And, and so it, it's really, and I'm not trying to not answer the question, but it really depends on the client. Now, if you were more comfortable doing your, using your, and I've had a lot of massage therapists in the equine world do this. They use their hands to very well judge the horse, look and see yeah. what's going on and feel. They would do all of that first, understand where they need to be working, understand what they could do with their hands, and then also understand where the machine can come into play and help them do this with that's, their hands. That's kind of where I, where I've kind of landed. Right. With all and, my different ways I've been doing things and at, because I like to be able to feel what's happening. My palpation skills and my assessment skills are much better that, ahead of time, I think. And then, and then I figure out how long I, or, you know, areas that I need to, to stay a little bit longer and, and that sort of thing. So. Exactly. And you know, from that perspective, when we first started, everything was pre-event. Help me run faster. Help me jump higher. Help the horse jump higher. Help the horse have better range of motion to run faster, longer. You know, that, that whole type of thing. And that's when we were all doing treatments. Now we're doing treatments and people understand I need recovery. I, yeah. need, I need this done and then I need to recover. So from your perspective, when you're working with an animal uh, or a person and, you, and they got pain and you do the things to relieve that pain and then you bring in the magna wave to help sustain and fur go deeper into the tissue to further uh -huh. along that recovery, I think is a, is a sweet mix. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Pat. Thank you and be sure to email info at MagnaWave PEMF and talk about gear and they'll fix you up. Perfect. Thank you. Uh-huh. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too.
Okay, I hope that uh, you folks could hear that all right. Let me go back now and see. We have another one. Let's see if we can get this one. Uh, this is from Kelly. Let's see. Um, need to put the... It's not dialing. It should be dialing the way it's supposed to, but it's not doing that. And, uh-oh. That's not going to dial that number. Calls in that I'm sorry. Let me come back here and get this uh, from Kelly. So we can call it. 443. Well, I'll get it here in just a minute, Kelly. Uh, read okay, why are you in that? Here we go. Oh, I got it. I know. Got it. You know, you got to remember how to use these things. You got to remember where to go to do it. And it takes took me a minute there just to figure out how I could uh, could do that. Pat? Yes, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Well, I'm doing okay once I figured out how to use my phone, how to <laughs> <laughs> make it dial itself automatically. Uh, so I'm uh, th there you have it. <laughs> What's up? So I think I have a horse that um, might have a stifle um, issue. Uh -huh. So yesterday when I was treating him... Um, he was very clear um, while he was shifting in the cross ties that he wanted his stifle magnoid. However, when I was magnoiding it, I didn't see like much movement. I had the semi and I was using high, um, but immediately the horse stopped moving the cross ties. He started licking his lips. So I know you talked about um, in one of your past experiences that a horse that um, you suggested to the vet that he might have uh, stifle issues and it turned out he needed injections. So I was wondering if you could elaborate on this, help figure out what's going on. Okay, so let me be clear. So when you were treating, you weren't getting a lot of movement out of the stifle. Which which attachment were you using? Um, I was using uh, the paddle on high. The paddle on high, treating the stifle. He relaxed and liked it, mm -hmm. and but yes. you weren't seeing a lot of movement in the area. Yes. Okay, I, I would say when what I have noticed when they need outside intervention is when there's movement in the area and now you might check this also the paddle is more direct you might use the butterfly or, okay. the, or the large loop uh, on the area and see what you get it's very conceivable that you need to move that because it could be a little referred you need to move that paddle around to find the spot right okay and so uh, you might just for for grins, try the, the butterfly or the large loop on the area to see what kind of movement you're getting because it's a different signal and can stimulate that movement a little differently than what the paddle would do. But my experience has been when I would treat a horse and the stifles were good, that doesn't mean that he wouldn't relax and love what we were doing and lick his you know chops and so on and so forth. But when I saw movement is when I would say, okay, this is what I don't normally get. And I would refer the, to the owner or to, for them to check with the veterinarian and have them check it. Uh, and back then I did not have the paddle to treat. So I was only using butterfly, large loop, and, and those types of attachments to uh, facilitate what I was doing. Does gotcha. that, okay. Does that help? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll give that a try today and see how he reacts. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. Have a great. And be, be sure to send uh, uh, send an email to info at magnawavepmf.com for some gear, and they'll take care of it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. A couple of great questions. Let me get back here to uh, where I need to be on the, on the deal. Um, all right. So if you have a question... Um, Tuesday, Hazel, that's that's last week. Um, if you have a question, put it in the chat box. Let's see if we have another one here. Um, that's it on the questions there, it looks like. Yes, if you have an additional question, please put it in the chat box. I'll take care of it. Or if you'd like to uh, visit with me, send me a text to 502-599-9722, and I would be happy to... Uh, give you a ring back and have a conversation with you and uh, get you some gear. Also, don't forget about the MagnaWave flash briefings. You can go to Alexa and uh, sign up for the MagnaWave flash briefings. Just go to Alexa, do the briefings, and uh, sign and say you want to do the MagnaWaves, and 
She'll have those briefings for you, uh, which is either me or Elaine or Alexa speaking to you daily with uh, tidbits of information, history, protocols, uh, various things, just something to go to and learn. It's a great place to send your customers, have your customers listen and, and they'll just go on listen and it just get builds up the credibility for you as a practitioner. Now soon, as I mentioned, we'll have the skills to where you can go into Alexa or the uh, Google Home and ask a specific question and they will answer with the answer to the question that you're looking for. And uh, we're building our bank of questions and answers. And uh, so we can possibly answer everything that someone may be uh, searching for with regard to their answers, uh, to their development of their health and wellness. Okay, we've been going about 37 minutes. It looks like the questions have, can you briefly again explain the different attachments, get how different attachments get different results? Great question. Okay, so... Uh, basically what we're doing is we have these attachments and they're coils, even the butterfly, uh, even the, the uh, paddle is a systematic coil design. It, it's an actual, um, 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 what's his name? Tesla, a Tesla coil uh, design. But what, what happens is the amount of tissue that you're stimulating. So for example, if you're using a large coil, you put it up on the hip and you move it across the hip of a horse or you put it on a person's back, they'll feel it through their whole back potentially. If you take the butterfly coil and you put it on a person's back or a horse's back or an animal you, and you move it from the left side of the low back to the, to the right side, while they felt the whole thing with the large coil, with the butterfly coil, they may feel more... Uh, magnetic stimulation on the left side than the right side because that's where the issue is or they may feel it a little higher up the spine even though it's affecting lower back or the lower back is affecting the as it goes up the spine you have that type of situation so the coils give you the opportunity they just expand your versatility in what you're in what you're doing i would often and and people in animals they, they, they'll or in any situation they'll get down to which coil they like the best for what they're doing and the coils by virtue here's the other thing to understand not only because of their size the amount of tissue you're stimulating can you narrow down what you're doing so i would use the large coil again talking about when i was doing horses and i go around the horse and look for areas and maybe up in the hip i'd get a lot of movement in the hip then i'd take the butterfly or i'd turn the large coil into basically a butterfly by folding it down i could narrow down exactly to the size of i say a softball where that sensitivity is in that hip. You can do the same thing. I used to treat people's backs. I'd treat their upper back, their lower back, and they'd say, oh, I feel it here, I feel it there, and this is fine. And then I'd go back and I'd say, okay, now what we're going to do is we're, we're going to find exactly where that's coming from. And I would able to, we'd be able to take this butterfly and move it over the body before I had the paddle. Now I would use the paddle and move it around the back. And all of a sudden they'd say, well, how are we going to know? And my answer is, you'll know. You'll tell me because you turn it up a little bit because it's not bothering up here. It's not bothering over here. But as you move around, all of a sudden you find that spot. Oh, there it is. And so you'd work that spot because they would feel it in that spot. Now, you don't want it to be uncomfortable. Once you find that spot, then you turn the machine to a comfortable setting so they're comfortable, they're, at, they're accepting what the energy is doing and coming into the body. And so the various coils basically help you narrow down the amount of tissue you're stimulating. Now, with that said, you take the large loops, the large wave wings that you can use on a horse to do both hips at one time, or you can use on a person. You can do their front and their back at the same time. You're getting signals going in both directions with these wings. You can do the whole upper torso, top and bottom with the large wave wings, very, very flexible. However, the, the PEMF gauss delivered by the larger loop is less than a smaller loop. So the gauss increases. The machine has the power to produce X amount of gauss. The loops affect how that gauss is delivered. So a very large loop will produce, will stimulate a lot of tissue at a lower, at a lower gauss than what the machine, just by virtue of the loop. So if you bring your loop size down, you're changing the amount of tissue you're stimulating and raising the amount of gauss that's delivered. 
down to the butterfly or down to the, uh, the way the, the uh, paddle is done as a Tesla, as a Tesla magnetic loop. Uh, so that's the difference in what you see. It's the amount of tissue you're stimulating. With the large wavelengths, for example, you'll put them on and because we're stimulating so much tissue, you can't turn it as high as you would if you're using a smaller, more condensed uh, apparatus to deliver the signal. And so that's the primary difference. If you want more energy into the area, you want to use a smaller loop, more pinpointed to where you're going. The large loop, for example, if you put the large butterfly, the large wave wings on a horse and you turn it up high, it may be too much because we're stimulating so much tissue. You need to turn the machine down so it's working more comfortably and providing the massage and the, the cellular stimulation and oxygenation that you're looking for uh, in that regard. So I hope that's clear on the, on the loops and, and how that works. If you'd like to know more, uh, please let me know. If you'd like to uh, send a text and I discuss it with you, please do that. 502-599-9722. Uh, All right, let's see if there's any other questions here that have come up. Nope, no other questions at this point. Uh, if you have a question, just put it in the chat box. Send me a text uh, with your number. I'd be happy to uh, talk with you about it uh, or send email your questions and we'll cover them next week on the uh, MagnaWave office hours. Every Tuesday we're here to answer questions whatever they may be about devices, about training, about PEMF in general, protocols, whatever the situation may be. I certainly want to answer your questions so you get the answers that you're looking for. Transparency to me and to us is a, is a very important thing. Uh, we, you can say and do a lot of stuff, but when we're right here with you live, uh, you know, we want to do it uh, correctly. We want to do it in a manner that's, that's understood, and we want to answer your questions, whatever they may, they may be or whatever issues that you're personally dealing with. Okay, let's just wait another second or so here. As I said, it's uh, 9.43. It's been a great uh, 43, 45 minutes. Uh, with you today and I always enjoy it. I always learn a lot when we do this. Did a question come up there? Let's see. Um, oh, wait a minute. All right, there were a couple questions. I was missing them. How deep does the zoom paddle penetrate? Well, the capability of the, the field that's put off by these devices is it'll pass right through anything. Even the low power stuff will pass straight through. For conversation's sake, when you talk about uh, how deep will it penetrate into uh, a person's body or a very muscular type situation, we say it can go 16, sometimes even 40 inches of total penetration that it can go through. What, what constitutes, what, well not constitutes, but what, what impacts that is the resistance, the muscle content, the, the fluidity level, uh, the, the water content, those types of things have some bearing on how deep it will penetrate. For conversation's sake, if you're asking the question on a paddle, will it pass, how deep will it go into, if you're doing a sacrum of a horse, will it go down 16, 20, 20 inches to get deep into the body, uh, at, at the inches that, inches that it needs to go? Yes. Um, so the, the penetration is certainly there. The secret is the amount of energy that's in that signal that is passing through a body. We have magnetic fields around us all the time that pass right through the body and they go all the way through. They don't hit us and stop. They go all the way through. The difference is the amount of energy that's applied to it. So when we increase the pulsed energy of our devices and it's passing all the way through, we're putting a lot of energy behind that to get into that area and uh, molecularly massage the area, help the oxygenation and the blood flow. Hope that help, uh, was helpful and answer your question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, just getting started and had to make my own gift certificate for a giveaway. Is there a template I missed someone has used? Yes, uh, call the office, uh, Jeff, and ask for Stephanie. And uh, she has all of that. Or you can ask for Aaron. They can tell you where these are at. A lot of that stuff is on the Facebook page under forms. 
and some of it is in the uh, certification training portal uh, under forms and, and uh, uh, tools that you can use. And so we have a lot of that. And if there's something that you need, if there's something that you've got an idea that we don't have, they'll create it for you and they'll make it available to everybody else. Uh, great idea if you want to use gift certificates, but I'm pretty certain that it's there for you to use and find something. Okay, let's see. Um, can you explain why the Zoom paddle feels different than the other coils? <clears throat> sure. Uh, the Zoom paddle feels different because of the way it's made. The other coils being round circles, if you will, it kind of comes out like a fountain. So the signal comes out and, and forms kind of a fountain effect is how, I, is how I describe it. What happens on the paddle it, it's a true uh, Tesla coil, so it is wound from the very beginning. The wire is touching itself as it's wound out, so it's like a spotlight. It's much brighter, uh, if, you, if you're talking like a spotlight, and it's much more intense as it comes out. So that's going to produce a different feel. If you put your hand on the coil and turn it up, it almost feels... Um, it, it's more piercing than the other coil that is just a little softer. And then you have the same thing when you get into the digital machines with the signal that's delivered as compared to the analog machines or the spark chamber machines. But the primary difference in the paddle is the way it's spun, the way it puts the energy out, more like a true heavy spotlight coming out. So that will change the feeling uh, that the coil or the, uh, the uh, paddle delivers. Hope that helped. And it was clear enough. Uh, let's see. Can you discuss the hands-on training you are making available? Sure. Um, Janet, the hands-on training is available. Uh, you could come to our office uh, in, in Louisville. Uh, it, years ago, and I would, st would still do it today, I haven't had requests for it uh, recently, but if someone wants us to come to them, uh, we will come. Uh, we charge expenses. Uh, to come to someone if we want us to come to your farm and spend the day with you and with your people We're more than happy to do that on the other side. We offer training at our offices We have a clinic in our office We go to Churchill Downs or if you're in a particular discipline You don't want to go to racehorses we can go to saddlebreds or Western horses or whatever Spend some time with them do treatments answer questions demonstrate how things work come back to the office uh, treat small animals, treat people to understand the various aspects of how all of this works. Uh, it's always been amazing to me, actually, when, uh, and I've been doing this since 2002, when I would talk with someone, I'd say, look, I can show you or explain to you how to use this machine in 25 or 30 minutes. You're going to have to use it 50 times, is the number I've always used, to understand what it's doing. You, you, I'm going to show you how to use it from the get-go to be effective. The more you use it, the more you're going to understand how to get that go by adjusting the, the uh, levels of the intensity of the device. So, and so people would come and I think, you know, you could, you, you, I, I had situations where I would try to explain, 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 explain. They, you know, they kind of just look at me. All of a sudden they'd call and say, I got it. I've treated my 50 dogs or my 50 horses or I've treated all this. And all of a sudden it all makes better sense to me. And, and it works. So you have to learn a lot on your own. But I've been, as I was saying, I've always been amazed when people come in who've had a year's worth of experience and they decide, I want to go in and, and uh, do the hands-on training. And they come and I learn, they learn. There's things that you, we, it's so easy for us to miss or things that we get into a little rut that we could do differently. And so that's what the hands-on training is all about. So we'd love for you to come to the office, spend some time with us, meet the crew and, uh, uh, get some additional additional training. Is it absolutely required necessary for you to be successful or do well at this? No, but it can help speed things along and just give you that extra little uh, punch that you might be looking for. Okay, is it okay to use back on track or magnetic, PHT magnetic, right after magna wave or should you wait? Okay, uh, great question. The, the answer is you, you can use those, those modalities uh, before or after a magna wave, a magna wave type of treatment because they're fine. They're very complimentary. People like to do that. 
and it's fine. Now back on track, PHT uh, magnetics is, is, a, is a static magnet type of device and it can support what we're doing. Back on track is, is a, a copper filament. Uh, they make it, they make the fabrics with copper in them and, and uh, to produce an infrared. Uh, I don't want to make a mistake here, but to help produce heat, to help the body with inflammation and with pain and all that type of stuff. And it works wonderfully. It, it's, it's a good product. Bo, I've known Bo since he launched that company in the United States uh, back in the, in the early 2000s. And in fact, I just spoke with him not long ago. But at any rate, uh, it's got a good product. Now, and there's two schools of thought on this. A lot of times we've always said MagnaWave helps reduce heat, helps take away heat from a situation, helps cool an area. So if you're using something that provides heat and we're trying to take away heat, it's always been discussed that there could be some competition there. Now, there are some schools of thought, change things, and people, some people are doing things in, at the same times today to get that heating fraction better assimilated with the blood flow and the oxygenation. Okay, we've always, out of simplicity, we've always said, look, if someone's doing heat, let the heat do its job, you come back and treat afterwards, or before and let the magnet wave and the PEMF do its job and then do complementary beyond that. So uh, you can approach it in either direction. My basic thing is if you're doing back on track, do the back on track, remove the bandages, treat the area, put the bandages back on and go on. And, and the same thing if you're using other types, other types of stuff. So that's just how I've always done it. That doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. Veterinary decisions may be very different and, and their advice certainly needs to be uh, adhered to and listened to and, and taken. And they have their ideas from the medical perspective. All we're doing is providing the opportunity for the body to better heal itself and work in conjunction with what the uh, medicine and the doctors do. Um, are cryotherapy and PEMF complementary? If so, is it better to done before or after? Well, it's interesting. We're working with some professional athletes who are using cryotherapy. And again, it, every, all of that in a, from a complementary perspective is being set up for a specific, specific thing to happen to the body. And so there may very well be cryotherapists who feel that the PEMF post uh, cryotherapy uh, may be more beneficial, some think, prior. Now, if you're dealing with an injury and you're going to go in and you're going to do cryotherapy to do the in injury and deal with it, and you're going to come back maybe day after tomorrow or two days or a week or even the next day, to use a complementary method like PEMF after that to help continue the healing process within the body would certainly be we find, can they work together? Most certainly, because we've done it and it works well. <clears throat> When's the best time? That's an individual process that people adapt and get into. That's one of the things that we're working on. We have a, a uh, sports facility in Louisville that we're starting to work very closely with. It works with a lot of professional athletes when they're in town during their off seasons and a lot of the higher echelon uh, student athletes in the community who have injuries and doing things. And we're working with them and I would call them pilot studies, if you will. We're doing, we're, we're taking an indication, we're working different, treating different ways in conjunction with other therapies just to see where the benefits come with the complementary aspect of, of doing things. So uh, certainly that is a, uh, a situation that, that could be very beneficial or work very well. Um, let's see. All right, no other questions at this point. We are uh, running out of time. I uh, don't see an additional question. So listen, thank you so much for being with me today. I've certainly uh, enjoyed being here with you. Some great questions. I have questions that I had on my list that I wasn't able to get to that I'll roll back over for next week's program. And uh, as always, uh, we enjoy being here. Be sure to catch up with the Alexa Flash Briefings. And uh, if you have a question, please let us know if we can answer it. We certainly want to do that. Have a great day. Thanks for being with me. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.